I'll now demonstrate Mule's new database connector. I'll show the ease of use of configuring the new connector, as well as its seamless integration with Batch, DataSense, and Data Mapper, which are already Mule features. So let's begin. First, as you can see here on the screen, is a Batch scope. There are three phases to Batch. The input phase, where the data is received or pulled from a certain endpoint, in which case we'll use a database. The process records phase, where the records are stored or processed in another endpoint, and the on-complete phase where we can run a report, for example. In this example, I will be using a poll element, okay, that specifies that we are going to query a database every one second in this example. So what I'm going to do is drag a database connector right here within the poll element. Here now we can see the new database connector. The first thing we'll need to do to configure it is specify a connector configuration. In this case, a connection to a MySQL database that we've pre-populated with a username and password. Next, we'll select the database operation that we want. And next, we'll, set, we'll specify what type of query we are going to run. In this example, we will use a parameterized query. This means that all Mule expression language expressions within the SQL query that you specify will be compiled or passed to the database as parameters. And the query that we're going to run is this query here, which I've created, which is essentially a select statement with a bunch of table joints. So now, as you can see, Mule is gathering data sense metadata based on the query and the database that have been entered as parameters to the database connector. The next step is to figure out the processing record step. So for this specific example, we will process the records and store them in a file. I need a specific location for the file, which I show here. And the next step would be to map the data between the database records and the file format. So for that, we will use a data mapper component and leveraging data sense metadata that have been collected, we can see that it has inferred that the input metadata for data mapper, which is the output of the database, is a list of maps. Now I can specify what type of file I want to store. So I will use a CSV and just generate the default. Creating the mapping, you can see here that we have correctly assumed that the output coming in is a collection of maps with these fields and should be mapped to a CSV with these same fields. And finally, on the onComplete step, we'll just specify a simple logger that designates that the entire batch job has run successfully. And there you go. We've successfully created a really simple application that takes records from a database, processes them, or transforms the data using Data Mapper, and stores it in a file.